Manchester City failed to score a goal today against Crystal Palace, 0-0. They had a lot of chances. It was a fun game. It was entertaining. One of the probably one of the better games that ends in a 0-0 score. You think 0-0, you think, you know, there wasn't a lot of chances. Probably, you know, probably sloppy, probably a lot of fouls, probably a lot of set pieces, you know, not, not too many chances. Goalie probably, you know, played good. Probably, you know, a, a battle in the midfield. They got a lot of tight, a lot of fouls, a lot of, you know, kick balls. No one was able to really get control of the game. But I think City, for the most part, were in control of the game. They they played the regular Guardiola style, keeping possession, passing the ball, going out wide, going back in, going back to center backs, bringing the opponent out, going again. How, how City play is using... When that doesn't work, letting Grealish, letting Marez go one on one, try to you know break the defense apart, get them you know shifting to another side, going to the opposite side, you know City, City's usual style of playing, and it kind of worked. They had a lot of chances. Silva had some chances. De Bruyne had some chances. Uh, Marez had some chances. Like, but they just couldn't put it away, man. It was just one of those days where it's just like. As the game kept winding, it was like, like, bro, how are we not up? How's this game still 0-0? Like, dude, like Silva could have had a tap in, try to go around the goalie, mistouched it, goes out of bounds. De Bruyne hits the post on a nice build-up play. Um, Marez gets the rebound. Looks like he's going to put it away. Keeper saves it. Um, another, like, it looks like it's going to be a tap in for Silva, but he's just not long enough to get there, grazes his toes, barely doesn't go in. Like there's so many there's so many plays where it's just like, dude, how is City not up? Like is it really like are they really not gonna score? Crystal Palace had a few chances or a few half chances where like, oh are they gonna take the lead? Like with this counterattack, with this lucky bounce that got their way. But you know, they never really looked too dangerous. And in the end, 0-0, Crystal Palace hold on. They take points away from City again. And now City, now we have a title race, man. Now Liverpool are just four points back. And they have a game in hand. If they win that game, they will be just one point behind against City. And they play each other next month. So this means if Liverpool wins out, from here on out to the end of the season, Liverpool will be crowned Premier League champions, which is crazy, especially in January when City had built up like a six, seven, I think even like an eight or nine point lead. And Liverpool was sending their best players to the Africa Cup of Nations. And you were just like, dude, this is it. This is it, man. Liverpool had to have like a lead going into the Africa Cup of Nations or at least, you know, be even or be like a couple points behind City because they're going to lose Salah, they're going to lose Mane, and it's going to be ugly. It's going to be bad. They were able to get through that stretch, and City have dropped points recently, and now they're only four points ahead, and Liverpool has the game in hand, and, like, this is this is going to be fun, dude. This is going to be fun, and, like, I, I'm guessing City, obviously City would have loved to been able to wrap the season up to have a very comfortable lead in the Premier League so they could focus on Champions League. That's not going to be the case. Liverpool is going to be on their heels the rest of their way, I would imagine. That's what it looks like. So, like, are they going to bottle both of them? Are they going to lose the league? Are they going to choke in the Champions League like they've been accustomed to? Like, ah, dude, because Guardiola, Guardiola has to get it done in Champions League. We know he can win, he can win the domestic cup, the domestic league, like nobody's business. We know he could do that. We know he could spend money. We know he can go to these big teams with a big budget that basically give him a blank check. And we know he could do that. He's a great coach. He could win the league. He could win the cup. Can he win the Champions League without Messi, without Xavi, without Iniesta, without that Barcelona system or support? He has to get it done. And now it's gonna be there's gonna be more pressure. Liverpool's gonna be right on their heels. So it's their schedule is not going to get easier. They're going to have to be able to manage both. But we'll see. If if City wants to take that step into being a real elite, like, historic team, like, really be regarded as, you know, one of these big, big clubs 
and not just be, you know, another team that had a big influx of money. This this is where you this is where you get it done, man. You win your league, you win Champions League, and and you know, <laughs> you tell the other ones to go fuck off. But we'll see if City's able to do it. Crystal Palace takes some points off of them. Liverpool's on their heels. It's gonna be a incredible finish to the season, in my opinion. I'm I can't wait to see how it plays out. Guardiola didn't make any substitution in this game, which I thought was odd, given the depth that they have and the quality players that they could bring in. It's his choice. Maybe someone could have helped them out, you know, change the pace. Maybe they had their scoring boots on. I don't know. Guardiola makes some questionable decisions here and there, playing without a CDM in the Champions League final, not making any subs against Crystal Palace. Who am I to judge him? Like like I said, Guardiola just needs to win in the Champions League. He's dropped way too much money in the City project to not have a Champions League. And like I said, they, I, I feel like City would have loved to have been able to put all their attention to Champions League and basically just had the Premier League in the back burner since it looked like they could have pushed their lead to like double digits. But now, Liverpool right there, man. And they're playing, Liverpool's playing inspired football. They're playing good quality soccer. So and they got they do have a tough matchup in Arsenal next. So if if Liverpool gets through Arsenal and do that, that pressure is just gonna keep building on City. And we'll see how they do we'll see how they uh respond. But I'm just happy. I'm ecstatic. I'm super, 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 super happy that we're gonna have a race in the Premier League. I was so bummed out in January when it looked like City was gonna run away with it. And you know, I, I thought it was gonna be a four team race this year. Chelsea, United, Liverpool, City. I thought it was going to go down to the end with all four of them. I really I really wanted that to happen. And at the very minimum, like at least a two-horse race. But And it looked like City was really just going to run away with it. So I'm very pumped that, you know, they kind of stumbled. Liverpool are coming in strong. And it looks like we're at least going to have a two two-horse race, which I'm fine with. As long as it's just not City running away with it. I, I don't really care who wins it. Um, who wins the Premier League? If it's not my Wolves, and it doesn't matter. All I wanted was to have a close race. And it looks like we are going to get that, so I'm pumped. I'm excited. Shout out to Crystal Palace for making City drop two points and tightening up the race. I can't wait to see how this plays out.